Hello, welcome. My name is San. This is a reading today for Aries. There are no dates on my readings. I trust that when they find you, if they resonate, then they're yours at that time. Aries, I'm doing your reading with my three decks blended into one, so you'll see a mix of all three in your spread today. So we've got compass on the split, but this compass card talks to me about um, kind of like your compass being confirmed or affirmed by somebody else. It's like there's an encouragement coming from somebody in your life or maybe some circumstances in your life, but it feels like it's somebody that the that your intuition is right, that you are moving in the right direction or that your 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 impulse, your spontaneity, your intuition about something is the correct thing. Because there's something, it's almost like maybe there's something actually like really real to point to that's confirming that, but it might be kind of like coming through another person, okay? So, and then the bottom of the deck is one ring circus. So that's fascinating. Is it like, is that what we're talking about? Is your intuition telling you to go it alone, perhaps? Maybe it's the, it's the right choice to uh, branch out on your own or to be independent. Or maybe, I mean, maybe it's the exact opposite. Maybe it's talking about a, kind of an, an end to, an end to, oh, it's interesting because then underneath that is the four of wands and the group think card. I was going to say, are you becoming independent or are you moving out of independence into partnership? There's been a lot of that in the readings recently, either like being ready to finally co-create again, or there was a really interesting message a few readings back about almost like being the, the oversoul energy and therefore always being separate from the group, no matter what kind of thing. So you always would be independent. So that's interesting. It's kind of playing with that idea again, but Aries, it looks for you like it might be talking about, yeah. And then the success card, the success card with the, the six of wands underneath that. It's like success almost comes from like brainstorming with other people perhaps. And then there's all this stuff about trusting it and moving into the unknown. Okay. Overall energy from the uh, Lifruma Healing Oracle for Aries. Okay. New bud. Well, this is a gorgeous card. It's interesting. It's making me think of there's all well, it actually it fits with your first couple cards here. There's been this kind of a thread starting to emerge, something about luminosity and about things becoming really vibrant and standing out from the environment. I almost actually feel like we're talking about you here today as Aries, that you're the one becoming kind of luminescent. It's like that, you know, the the iridescence on the on a bubble, something like that. It's all that gorgeous kind of shimmering, swirling pinks and blues and greens. It's like this is your energy. It says new bud, early magic. Create, germinate, and pause. There is timing, divine. Can okay, so it does seem to be talking about, you know, it's almost like a springtime energy and your first card on the table is the fool. See all the colors are there again too, right? All of these kind of pinks and blues and purples. Um, talking about newness, it feels like there's a fresh new energy in your life and it's coming through you, I want to say. It's almost like you've been revitalized. You've got like a new spring in your step or you're feeling really sparkly or or inspired, something like that. Um, so I want to just say the overall energy, this is you. This is your energy. Okay, so we're starting with the fool and flying. So this and again, see, there's all those colors again. So this seems to be something that's coming into your, there's a new energy coming into your life. The fool being the new and the flying seems to be almost like this magical element. It's almost like elementals or fairies or pixies or magic of some form. And then maybe you're having experiences related to those kinds of beings, but it feels more like you're embodying that. Like you're almost this kind of elemental magic and it feels new and it feels playful and it feels like something maybe that you're experimenting with here. And it's kind of like it's taking you in a new direction, but it also feels like this flying horse here is kind of coming into you. Something is coming into your life that seems like I mean, maybe it's something you've been waiting for for a while, but it's almost like your ride is here or the tool that you need is here. Like the thing is here that will that will kind of launch you into the next 
phase or into a new adventure or something like that, right? Because this is coming to you. There's kind of like a new magic in a sense, a new energy coming coming into you, interestingly. I almost want to say that maybe you're channeling a new energy because this is coming from behind you. To me, that talks about psychic realm stuff. And there has been kind of this interesting phenomenon occurring for me where it's talking about this kind of like energies coming in from behind. So that's really interesting. It's almost like a merging or a blending. Okay, so, and then the Straddling Worlds card coming next. Again, all of those colors again, right? So the Straddling World card, the Straddling Worlds card talks to me about, you know what, it's this deck right here. I'm just going to show it. I bought this deck. It's a very strange deck, but I bought it because of the colors. You see all this illumination. It's all this kind of purples and pinks and blues, right? Oracle of Pluto. It's a very unusual deck because it's all this hand puppet, shadow puppet stuff that I don't think that I can work with the imagery of it, but I just love the colors of this deck so much that I bought it just because of the colors, right? And that's all the colors I'm seeing for you. And it seems to be important. It's that illumination, like in the dark kind of thing, right? It's almost like glow in the dark or black light type of quality. You see it's in this, this card as well. So I don't know if that will mean anything to anybody, but um, what the Straddling Worlds card talks to me about is being able to pull off something maybe that wasn't possible before. It's kind of like moving into the realm of the miraculous, but I'm always really hesitant to use that word. But it feels like, you know, a, this new energy that is emerging in your life or through, I want to say through you, maybe it's like a new creative spark, something like that, a new zest for life, a new take on life. Um, it's like suddenly you're feeling like you can do things that you weren't able to do before. And it could just be something like, the the scope of your reach or the efficiency of your efforts or um the, just the mere magnitude of the productivity for example it's like you may be just getting a whole lot more done that you didn't used to be able to do maybe it's because you, you seem to just have a lot more energy than you did previously right so but the fascinating thing here though is this two of air and the cleaning house card which are talking to me about okay there's kind of this newness sweeping through your life but at the same time, it's going to require an adjustment. And I feel like this is the phase maybe that you haven't quite realized yet or stepped into yet, because right now you're just kind of riding this wave of sparkly energy in a sense. Something new has been introduced into your energetic field or into your psyche or to, into your, your orbit. Um, and it's just, it's giving you that kind of spark, right? But there's something about a, an adjustment is still needed which is going to become really apparent moving forward. I'm seeing this two of swords actually for the first time ever, almost like a chiropractic adjustment. Maybe because I'm really noticing the spine today, but it's just talking about an adjustment. It almost feels like it could be really related to your identity actually, right? Because you've got the many masks, the authentic self coming up next. So there's this chiropractic adjustment or some sort of an adjustment that needs to be made related to these two energies, which is cleaning house and the authentic self, many masks, authentic self, which both of these cards are very kind of challenging energies, right? They're, they require a lot of discernment about what exactly is being experienced. The cleaning house card talks to me about kind of like familiarity moving into the realm of the un, the unknown or the alien. It's like where you suddenly feel like an, not, like an outsider in your own life, something like that, right? So it's almost like if you continue to ride this wave, perhaps, or pursue this, like follow this path, whatever this compass is talking about, it's like, um, it's almost like your life or your own how you present yourself maybe in your life is going to shift. It's going to require a major adjustment. It's interesting. It's coming through as major adjustment. And it could even be related to the straddling worlds cards, almost like in while you're working, while you're doing, because I'm seeing here like that you're being really productive, for example, while you're being suddenly overly productive, it's kind of like suddenly getting this influx of energy and then deciding to clean the house, like 
or something like that, right? Like just really, really, really getting to work because you got all this energy and you don't really know what to do with it. So you got to do something with it. So you're just doing everything with it. You're getting everything done. That's what this is talking about. But in that process, it's like some sort of an adjustment occurs. Maybe we're talking about actually physically, but I feel like it's more consciousness based and it's more almost like identity based so that when it happens, it's almost like your, your familiar surroundings or maybe even looking into the mirror is suddenly very strange to you or very foreign to you or just different. You're just seeing it really differently. But the cleaning house talk, card talks to me about like a, a, an, an awkward phase, going through an awkward phase where you're not quite sure exactly what you're dealing with. So it feels like it comes in like really um, deliciously. This is something that you definitely want, something you want to pursue. It's backed up almost like by people in your life or by experiences itself, but then it kind of goes through a little bit of a weird phase or maybe it just gets deeper or much faster than you expect or it's, it's something like that. It's like, it's, it's kind of like it starts out really playful and then it gets really serious in a sense, but not serious in a bad way, but serious like in a, it's, it's massive. This is much more transformational than I expected. I thought it was just some, some playful aspect, but actually we're talking about almost like an entire identity overhaul, for example. Okay. So, and then the four of earth. Is this related to the compass card? I don't really feel like it is necessarily. So the four of earth is always my um, ultimate support character, right? This is somebody who is like your biggest cheerleader, your biggest support, may or may not be that here today. It almost feels like, this could even be like a guide or some sort of profound spiritual experience because it gets kind of, okay, with the mountain card coming next, I don't know how to describe this. She's holding a moth, right? She's holding it out to you. The moth to me is a profound psychic ability or phenomenon, right? She's holding this moth out to you. I want to say this is you at the mountain. And because it's the mountain and the mouth is open, it's almost as if she's putting the moth into your mouth and you consume it, right? And it's a big deal. It's monumental. The mountain is always a momentous occasion, right? So swallowing this moth... It's like ingesting. Okay, so it could just be something that somebody's saying to you. It doesn't feel like the compass. The compass is separate. The compass is like something or someone in your life that is just encouraging you. This is something else. This is almost like this profound encounter. Could happen in a dream or it could, it could happen in your actual physical reality. It almost looks like maybe consuming some sort of a psychedelic or something. If it's not literally that, it's having that kind of an effect because it's like you're swallowing the moth. Have you ever seen the OA where they swallow the, the, the bird or they swallow the fish and it's a way to kind of link them in dimensionally to that other realm, right? It's like they're in this astral realm and they consume something in order to keep that connection. So it's like that. It's like consuming something in order to keep a connection, Okay, so she gives you the moth, you swallow the moth, whatever that means symbolically for you, and then the jeweled web comes up next, right? Connectivity, and it's almost like this jeweled web is kind of the, the brain or the consciousness um, ingesting that energy. And you see why I'm saying it's almost like a psychedelic. It's almost like all of these brain can, uh, synapses start going off. You start making all of these connections All of these things begin lighting up for you, which is really interesting because we've got all this illumination. Maybe this is the reason why you are illuminated. Okay, so it's like, Aries, it's almost like you've consumed something. And okay, so obviously it doesn't mean literally, probably. I mean, it could. But I think it means more like energetically or like um, ideas or somebody said something to you that really kind of got to your core and you kind of took it into yourself and ingested it and digested it, right? You're digesting it. And in that process, it's kind of making all these connections and it's lighting you up. It's like, it's like, it's literally lighting you up. It's making you brighter and lighter and more playful, right? And so you get into this, this whole process where this adjustment occurs. Okay. There's something really interesting here though, about the emperor being the Aries, of course, here's the emperor card. This emperor is, 
is he's this it's got a long story there's a long story with this card today it's showing up a little bit differently i mean it's still got a little bit of its kind of general message of kind of being cloaked or being you know covered up like wearing a costume but that's not really it it's something like standing proud and strong which is not fake it's not a costume it's not a cover-up or a cloak it's authentic but it's almost like maybe at the expense of something there's something about and maybe this is it maybe this has something to do with it this is like this conversation that's happening where this one is saying to this one whatever is about to be said about this emperor is what this character is saying to this character so <laughs> it's something like i can see you beyond all of the strength and bravado for example it's not exactly that but it's like i can see how um life has required you to have to be strong or to have to be the leader or to have to be knowledgeable right but there's something it's almost like there's a softer energy underneath that is kind of this is coming at the expense of that, right? Because we've got the Six of Earth coming up next and it's something about, there's all of these other aspects or all of these other gifts that are almost kind of being covered up or being, the Emperor energy is being favored over all of these others. And there's something in this mix that is essential or ideal maybe for this energy here, right? In order to kind of play in this iridescence, there's something like softer or maybe even kind of like less mature or less developed than this Emperor energy. This has been something that you've been doing or focused on for a long time. Okay, so this Emperor might just be that it's, what's established you've established either like a way of being or a way of working that is very like warrior like or very it's very um it's got a lot of integrity it's uh it's an energy that is a, a, an incredible caregiver right it's kind of like because because there are others that require it i be this does that make sense i stand at the helm something like that but there's also something about the wisp coming out of the eye there. And I was talking about that in a reading the other day and I can't remember what it was. But it's almost like this daydreaming or this envisioning and, and a little bit of emotion spilling out as this conversation is happening. Something about imagination, illumination, emotionality, energy flowing, perhaps... Um, it, kind of like being seen, being seen through the, um, I don't want to say the facade because it's not completely accurate. It's not like the emperor. It's not like Aries, you are putting on a facade, although you do have this many masks card, right? Which is talking about a mask or there's talking about something deliberately or not is masking your authentic self. And it could just be that there's like this need to be strong or there's need to be a leader or this need to be um, in the maybe even assigned role as a role that you maybe didn't even choose for yourself, but a role of being the leader, being the one who knows, being the one who, that people seek for answers or guidance, something like that. But there's something about this six of earth. This six of earth always talks to me about all of the things that you've gathered that maybe all the aspects of you that you may be almost overlooking because of the emperor energy and maybe that's what this is talking about it's kind of like all these connections it's not saying that the emperor needs to go away or be shed like this many masks card it's almost like you know you see there's something about this emperor in the mountain it's almost like the emperor is beginning to make all of these connections about all of these other aspects or a particular aspect that is being kind of put on the back burner because the emperor is required or has been required. I hope that makes sense. Because you've been in the position of the emperor for some time, you haven't had the luxury maybe to explore these, these elements, whatever they are, but I feel like you would know what they are. 
It's like giving yourself permission like to daydream or to be softer or to be more um, playful or childlike or use your imagination and or to really kind of immerse yourself in the uh, the esoteric perhaps. But when I say esoteric, I want to say it doesn't have to be esoteric in the way that we talk about it, but more like in the um, the fringe, in the perimeter, in the in the outskirts, in the be, to be an outlier. It's almost like having to toe the line. You can't afford to be the outlier, be unusual, or be strange. There's something about this emperor that is very conforming, maybe. Maybe. So there's all of that that's coming in and it feels like it's coming from this four of earth. So this could be a character in your life that is speaking these words to you and it's kind of making all these connections and lighting up all these things, lighting up all, lighting up all these pathways in your psyche. That's another thing too. It's almost like, I mean, that's what she does. She kind of opens the psyche. You see that? She just like makes all these connections and activates. It's almost like uh, having the crown activated or opened. Which is interesting because that's what's happening here too, right? With the eye and that's like all this energy is happening up here for the emperor. And it's almost like there's there's somebody that feels a little bit uncomfortable with that. But no, it's, a, it's a uncomfortable, but at the same time, it's extremely pleasurable and desired. But there's something like I didn't expect this to happen or I didn't expect this to, I didn't expect to feel this way. Because it almost feels like a tingling up in the crown. And it's, you know, when, when you get tickled or something, it's very, um, well, it's very vulnerable, intimate. Um, and, you know, maybe just not something that you've experienced lately or, you know what I mean? Okay, so. The unexpected visitors coming next and the justice card. Okay, there's something like. It feels to me, Aries, like you're being called out. Justice seems to appear kind of at the end, right? It's almost like you've got all of these characters appearing. One of them is the support character, right? With the compass encouraging you in your direction. The other one is this that is kind of triggering this kind of crown activation within you. But then this one, maybe the justice card is almost like your higher self or the universe, something like that, because it's very much higher order reality. There's a higher order reality. It's almost like maybe your own higher timeline, something like that is calling you out. So there does seem to be a little bit of maybe uh, defensiveness or protectiveness because it's like you seem to be going through a lot of new and unexpected energy that is um, feeling, putting you in a position of vulnerability maybe, but it's more like in a place that you haven't felt for a while and it kind of tickles, it's something like that, right? And tickling, being tickled is very is a very vulnerable and intimate moment. So then it's kind of like, it's putting you into this vulnerability state. And then from that state, it's almost like, and now the universe is here saying, okay, Aries, it's time to almost like come out of your shell, something like that. It's like, you're being called out. So there's some aspect of you that is being called out. And I want to say it has to do with the six of earth. It's like there's an aspect of you that hasn't been being utilized and maybe is kind of tied into this lighter, more effervescent. That's the other thing with the effervescence. It's almost like the energy is moving up and, it's, and it tickles. Um, there's this effervescent aspect of you that is being called forward. And it's like it's, there's a lot of vulnerability here on your part. But it's like the your life, your higher self, the universe is calling you into this. So it almost feels like it's like something that's happening to you. It's very welcome by you. You feel very open to it, but it's almost like you're not quite sure exactly what's going on. Okay. And then look at this. This is all that effervescence too, right? It's like, it feels like all the energy is moving up, right? It's really beautiful. Okay. I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to continue to pull cards and create an extended if you're interested in that, link is in the description. And if not, I will see you next time, Aries. Thanks. Bye.